All right, here's some help with 6-4 exercises. Um, the first one is pretty easy, except it does ask you to use arrays.sort, which really helps your life out. So you don't have to put these in order. Remember, median finds the middle number. A lot easier to find a middle number if you put them in order. So I did want to show you how to use that. You really just type array.sort. And in parentheses, you put the array you're going to sort. So um, don't use numbers one or numbers two. Use this guy, right? Because you're inside this um, median, uh, whatever it's called, method. Um, so that's the first thing. After that, you can start your um, for loops for, you know, if an array. Or I don't even think. Do you need a for loop on this? No. Yeah, so if an array is even length, you'll do one thing, and then you'll have if an array is odd length. Because if it's even, you gotta do something worse. If it's odd, you find the middle number. One other thing um, I would recommend is that you be careful to know that when you're checking these um, the index is one less than the length so like when I was doing this problem if I thought of here it's easy to find the middle of these numbers if I do this I got a 0 1 2 3 if I add 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the dot length on numbers 2 would be 7 if I do dot length divided by 2 I get 3.5 right but since it's an integer it rounds it down to 3 now at first I was worried about that because I thought oh isn't 3 here no think about it. 0 1 2 3 3 would be the middle number if they're in order. So just be careful that you know the difference between length, which actually counts, and index, which tells you what position you're in. And you're looking for like on this one, you want the middle number once they're in order. On uh, the other one, you want the average of the two middle numbers. So not too hard to do. Let's try that out. But I wanted to show you this sorting thing. That's all you got to do. And it's in order. You don't have to say equals array. It's just done for you cool stuff, right? The second array and, or sorry, second uh, example, and you're going to have to find the index of the last value in the array that's a multiple of three. Now there's a hard way to do this and then there's an easy way to do it. So in like this one, the last time it's a multiple of three isn't here, it's back here. Um, and you're supposed to tell what index it happens at. And if it's not, if it never happens, you're going to return negative one. What I recommend is um, write your for loop to go through backwards because then you can just return um, the index the very first time a number divisible by three occurs. And then, so you'll do an if and else, right? Because if it's divisible by three, it's going to return it. Uh, not even if else. You'll just do your return negative one should just happen outside the for loop, and it'll only get there if you haven't returned a value already. So that's my recommendation on this one. And the second one is do your do your for loop backwards and just have it return the index the first time it finds one that goes back or that uh, divides by three nicely which if you use modulus it's pretty darn easy all right so those two aren't the worst the next two are pretty bad so i'm going to do the third one and then the fourth one i'll give even more help on okay so here's the third example and in this one you got to do two things you have to uh, write the method get most improvement, which is you don't have to do anything in this set, but get most improved student is in here, 
and then get exam range is in here. So the thing I would say is um, when I was attacking this problem, the first thing you got to do is <clears throat> if you're going to, I think I want to do get exam range first. Okay, so because the other one depends on it, right? So I kind of want to know how that works. Um, so the exam range, let's look at this. Um, here it is. Your code goes here. So it says, uh, most improve is the largest score exam range. Compute the score, subtract the min from the max. Okay. Um, there we go. The two string method will print it. Okay. So if we're going to make the range of exams and you look at it and you'd say, okay, from here you do, you would find the highest and you find the lowest and then you subtract them. Okay. So first I need to, um, I need to set a min and a max because I need to hunt through any, uh, array and find the max and the min. So before you even do your for loop, you got to make a min and a max. And it's a bad idea to set min to just a low number. Because what if I set it to zero, but all my numbers in my code were negatives? Then your min would not really mean min. So the best idea is to take your um, array. See how we have an array here called exams, number of exams. Um, so I want to set it to... I want to set it to the first one and maybe that is the min but if that's the min then you win right if it's not it'll get overwritten in our code so if you just set both and this is a good habit um, so you don't get in trouble by setting a max too low or max too high or min too high um, or vice versa on that then if you always just set it to the first value in your list in your array, then um, you won't get in trouble because it could be the lowest or it could be the highest or it'll get overwritten soon. So now I need to go through my whole list and I need to overwrite the min if I, there's a number smaller later or I need to overwrite the max if there's a number bigger later. So you're going to make a for loop, right? Your standard for loop. Um, i equals zero, i is less than exams dot length, and i plus plus, right? Kind of standard here, right? And then you're going to write um, in if statement, if the exams bracket i is uh, greater than max, so I can do one for the um, set new max, right? So if it's greater than max, then I'm going to make the current one a max equal to whatever my current score is. Um, and I think, actually, now that I look at this, I don't even need to start at zero. I can actually start at the next one because zero is taken care of in both of these. Huh. Oh, well. It doesn't hurt. It's not going to hurt because I said strictly greater than. So I can reset it. You'll do the same thing for min. And then, you know, a similar statement. You can just make another if to set new min. So you'd overwrite the max or min. And then what am I going to do? I need to return something. In fact, if you look up here, you need to return an int. So at the end, after your for loop, but before your... Uh, method ends you need to return the max minus the min right so that's pretty easy so you can finish that one up now that i have something that can find the the range you go over here and just notice that it needs to return a student class and here's what's sneaky is you have a new um you have a new array called students Okay, so when I do my for loop, I want to make sure that I'm using, uh, actually, no, see, that's how I got in trouble. Um, I want to 
to see this loop is based off of number of students added. I think if you use the students.length, you're going to get in trouble. That's what, when I first tried this, I got <clears throat> in trouble. So I kind of took my cue from here and made my list go just to number of students added. So in this one, you know, you need to make a most improved to begin with. Kind of like in our in here, it was best to start with the very first item in my list. Well, similarly here, you just start with a student most improved. You need to make a most improved variable. This is what I'm going to return at the end. And then instead of creating a new blank one, just grab the first one from your list, right? And my list um, is called students here. It's a list of students. So I'm going to grab the first student. And I'm going to say they're my most improved to begin with. And it might get overwritten, kind of like our last problem, but, um, you know, that remains to be seen. Oops. Yeah, so I first grab my most improved student, and then I need to keep track of um, their exam range. I want to see who had the biggest range. So I need to make not only that, but I need to make, uh, at least the way I did it, I need to make a starting number to keep track of who has the biggest range. So if I make one called max range and I do student, I grab the first, I, first item in my list and instead of just actually having a student, I use the method get exam range, the method I just wrote. Well, you got to finish it, but so now I set the first student to most improved. I check if there's a max range. <laughs> I set the max range to whatever this first student's exam range is, and then I can do my for loop, right? But on here, I was just warning you, make sure <clears throat> you make your for loop based off of this and not um, the student's list. All right, so we'll try that out. Um, see if you can make your for loop. And basically, if your ifs, you need to put an if statement. If their max range is bigger than this, so if you check every student, you're going through the list of students. So if you check the list of students and that student has a higher exam range than max range, you want to reset most improved to whichever student you're on. So just try that out. And if you get stuck, just email me. And I will help you out. But you got to make sure at the end, after your for loop, you return most improved, right? So basically in here, you need to be careful on what your, what your if statement is and stuff. It's, they're pretty much the same thing, but instead of basing your, your max off um, numbers, you're, you have to get the number of range and then change the student most improved only if they fit a higher max range than the original. All right, so try it out. See how it goes. Let me know if you have questions.